Hey guys, welcome to my video on subsidies in a competitive market. Uh, this video is going to be part one of two. I'm going to do two of these. This one is for a principles level treatment of the topic. There's not going to be actually any real math in it. A little bit to get some equations to figure out what price we use. But I'm not going to like solve for any specific quantities or prices or consumer producer surplus. If you want more, go to part two and I will do a full mathematical breakdown of this for you. So we're talking about subsidizing goods, subsidies of negative tax. But first, let's review what happens with a regular tax. An excise tax is a per unit tax that we put on a good. And to analyze the market outcome, we would set the demand price, PD, equal to the supply price plus the tax, suggesting that the price demanders pay is different from the price sellers receive. And the T between them is a gap between the prices that they pay and receive, and that's the tax. Now, sometimes you could model this as a tax on demand, where there's effectively a tax to demand curve that's less, in which case we get this wedge between the demand curve and the supply curve, which that wedge is T dollars high. Or you can model it as a tax on supply, in which case it's a decrease in supply, in which case you get this same wedge, T dollars high between supply and demand. So I'm just going to ignore the idea that it could be either one of those because it literally doesn't matter who you put the tax on. Uh, in a future video, I'll mention how elasticities determine who pays more of the tax. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave that wedge there and this equation. The demand price is T tax dollars more than the supply price. And so there's your separate tax amounts. So there's your demand price. There's your supply price. The amount between them is the tax. And so boom, there it is. Tax. All right, there's our review. We can remember some of the results from our previous videos. It's going to have lower consumer and producer surplus and an equilibrium. It, the government's going to collect T times QT dollars in tax revenue. And because QT is less than Q star, there's going to be a deadweight loss. This market is inefficient. I think we're ready to move forward now. So the review is over. Let's get to a subsidy. A subsidy is a negative tax. The government pays you per unit of a good. And it's usually something we do when we want to increase the consumption of a good. Although there could be also some rent-seeking kind of arguments to go behind it also. But some examples, we subsidize education. We subsidize clean energy. We subsidize a lot of agriculture and food industry. Uh, we subsidize oil production. There's a lot of stuff where we do this. So what's with the subsidy equal a negative tax? And this equation, PD equals PS plus T, changes to PD equals PS plus a negative S, which can be rewritten as PD plus the subsidy equals PS. So I don't care if you remember it as a negative tax or if you remember this separate equation for the subsidy. It's the same thing. But the difference, because it's the government giving money instead of the government taking money, the sellers will receive more than the demanders actually pay. And so that's going to lead our market to consume, to produce and consume more of the good than it would in equilibrium. Something like this. The wedge is on the other side, where our supply price is greater than our demand price. So here's our Q with the subsidy. There's the demand price down there. There's the supply price up there, and the gap between them is the subsidy itself. So let's break this market apart into pieces for consumer and producer surplus, putting some extra lines in here, and boom, we're going to have a bunch of letters. So we'll do it with letters first, and then we'll add some math later. So each of these letters represents the area of those shapes in the graph. And consumer surplus before the subsidy is just the areas of A and B. Producer surplus before the subsidy is C and D. All right, so those things we kind of already knew. And before there's a subsidy, there's no money for the subsidy. There's no deadweight loss. But what's consumer surplus after the subsidy? 
Well, there's this low demand price and a high, a high quantity with it. The consumer surplus after the subsidy is A and B and C and F and G. Because Consumers are paying a lower price and buying a higher quantity of the good. So they gain C, F, and G. What about producers? They receive a higher price and sell a higher quantity. So producers' surplus is B, C, D, and E. So they gained B and E. You'll notice there's some double counting here. There's B's in both and there's C's in both. Uh, it will be accounted for because we're also paying money out. So there is a subsidy happening where it's the subsidy amount dollars per unit times the number of units. So it's this whole rectangle, B, C, E, F, G, H. And that's all money we're paying. So that's kind of take that takes away from our surplus in the market. And so if I subtract that subsidy from my consumer and producer surplus, I get my deadweight loss, which is that area H. Those are goods that we produced and consumed where the costs outweighed the benefits for society. So this market is inefficient, just like our tax leads to an inefficient market. But in this case, it's from consuming too many units of the good. So here's your quick crash course. Uh, I'm not going to do any math in this video. I'm going to leave this one accessible to principles level work. Uh, but go ahead and watch for part two, where I will do a full solved example just based on some equations for the supply and demand curve and a specific dollar amount for the subsidy. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. Happy econing, and I'll see you next time.